In this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel, we take you down to Lake Wing, Florida during the holiday fly-in and car show event featuring the National Stoll Competition, and we met this guy that installed a Honda Accord turbo engine and sport bike landing gear in his airplane. Now above you sits a Honda, right? And what uh, what does this come from and what horsepower rating is this Honda this engine? This is the Viking 195. It's basically a Honda Accord engine uh, with a turbocharger. Well, it's I say that and, and it's it's a Honda Accord turbo. It's already turboed in the car. The cool thing about that is the turbo is not like suspended off the engine with exhaust pipes. It's mounted to the liquid cooled exhaust manifold with four bolts. So it makes it really clean, makes the turbo run at a lower temperature and spools the engine up really good. You know, we I think we really impressed at the stall competition here because we we had, I think we had a takeoff in the like 40, 47 feet or something like that, which is the shortest of any airplane on the field here. Now being this is turbo, do you have any turbo lag or do you have enough time to just kind of gradually put the throttle in and it, and it catches up? Yeah, the turbo lag, I never thought too much about it because up until recently, because we, we hear about that in cars because we get off the line and we're accelerating and we're competing with another car, race car or something like that. And in airplanes, it's usually a gradual throttle movement and all that, but now we're doing like almost uh, stall competition, so we want to get off the line and into the air as quickly as possible. And if we're eating up feet that is counting against us in the competition because the turbo is still spooling up, it's now become a valid point. So uh, a couple of days ago, uh, me and my, my ground crew here, Bill Fahey, we talked about it over dinner and a glass of wine. And we said, well, tomorrow morning during practice, I'm going to add as much power as I can holding the brakes. When I can't hold the brakes anymore, then I'm gonna put the rest in. And that did actually give me a couple of feet uh, shorter because uh, the turbo didn't have as far to speed up to maximum as it did all the way from idle. So, uh, so yeah, we, we kind of picked up on that and uh, we did that, of course. I also been on the phone with Dean Phillip over in New Zealand about how to make the shortest takeoff, you know, and he was giving me a couple of pointers because I don't, I don't fly stall. I'm in the shop. <laughs> I need to practice a lot more. And um, well, I do fly stall. I mean, I've done it twice now here, and I love it. But I, I don't get so much time to practice, which I'm going to change. I'm going to definitely change that and practice more my landings and everything. But I said, Dean, what's up? You know, should I lower the tail right away, or should I keep it up, or what should I do? So he gave me one little hint because from the practice the day before, definitely dragging the tail or moving it, you know, and moving the tail down into the grass immediately was a slower takeoff. So the ultimate ended up being forward stick so that the airplane was planted straight ahead when you let go of the brakes. Uh, nothing unpredictable happening, like, like the plane wanting to like tip up a little bit and then come back down and all that. So full forward, maximum acceleration, had to find a word that was just the right length, like, you know, the 1001, 1002, and that was too long. 1001 wasn't long enough, <laughs> so I did Viking aircraft. <laughs> so, so, break release, Viking aircraft, yank. And then at that point, it's all peripheral vision and rudders gotcha. to, to nail it so it stays straight. And that, it's been working and it's been fun because we did have we had amazing take up performance even with no wind so that that was well say, let, let say, me ask you let yeah, me ask you this ahead. real quick um or somebody that hasn't met you before and know what you do um this is the 100 and 195 195 turbo yeah. but you offer uh, three different versions and i believe they're all honda Wh which vehicles do they come from well the smallest one now which is starting to become more popular is uh is the 90 which is the mitsubishi three cylinder and then we do the 130 Honda Fit engine, the 150 engine out of the HRV, uh, which you did a nice video on. And then we got the 195 Accord Turbo. Okay. Yeah. So all you, you Honda lovers out there, there is some other options out there other than four wheels. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, of course our company specializes in not just selling you a Honda car engine. We, we make the entire thing, including all the videos, how to install the video. and. We do the, you know, the whole firewall forward, engine, complete engine, and all that. And we're having a lot of fun doing it. And like with Zenit, you know, Sebastian been been really forward about, you know, 
His father always said, hey, you can put any engine you want in this as long as it's within this and this weight. And Sebastian's carried that tradition forward. And, and a lot of the Zenit builders and flyers, uh, we used to be an alternative engine. That was a popular term. But in the, the Zenit airplanes, we've become a, a primary engine for their builders. And that's, uh, that's an achievement, you know, to have a, a, a aircraft manufacturing or, or making parts so people can manufacture their airplanes endorse uh, or at least uh, suggest that the Honda is just as good as other engines and hey guys one second hey guys you've probably seen me traveling a whole lot these days what makes all this possible getting this original aviation content is sponsors like these Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com Avionation at avnationusa.com. Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, Give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. So yeah, we, we've seen this posted on social a bit and here today flying around with this literally looks like a sport bike fork triple tree, uh, which I don't know has ever been done on an aircraft before. You want to explain what the thoughts are with this? Well, I had the what we call a steel bungee, was 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 really a suspension improvement. Most people thought it was a good improvement for the Zenit airplane. Eventually Zenit also changed to away from a bungee cord because I think there was something with the manufacturing processes of the bungee cords where talcum was outlawed and they couldn't make bungee cords last and, and because of that they went to a puck system on the firewall. Uh, I had a steel uh, spring that was in the landing gear but both of them had the and the um, landing gear strut here moving up and down on the firewall in uh, in some blocks now that's okay it's a, it's a it's an ingeniously simple system you can clamp it to the bottom with a block and on the top with a block and you get a lot of leverage and strength and everything and and Zenit has been very successful with that um, one, one thing it does though is because your steering rods are also tied to this uh, and the whole thing steers, uh, disregard this wire, this is something else we're just playing with, uh, has nothing to do with this. But there's steering rods going through the firewall and of course when, when this part originally goes up and down and you've got your steering rods, the steering rods are doing this in slots in the firewall and the firewall is very thin metal just to protect you from the engine so you end up inevitably with some noise you end up with this crinkling noise as you're taxiing over the grass and all that so I thought um, and another reason I thought about this is that when you have the suspension and the steering and the rudder all together it's hard to get the steering working perfect and the rudder to be very smooth and lightweight um, and a good feel when you're flying the plane when you kick the rudder around keep the ball in the center I thought, you know, how can we separate the suspension from the steering? And that's, that's the main reason for that. I said, well, if we lock this in place, you know, so that it doesn't go up and down, it just steers, then that takes care of the steering and the rudders and all that stuff. And, and nothing is going up and down on the firewall, so we're not going to get any noises. Um, so th this is a kind of a gross change from what it was originally, and you can look at the bottom of your red uh, nose strut there of where it was originally and the tire was all the way up to that this so this is where the original fork would bolt and we have a fork here except it's a it's a suspension fork so originally the fork was right here and right here and the tire would sit here now of course our airplanes just happens to be very tall you can still have the wheel further up you don't have to have it this tall of course this is all adjustable you can move these up and down and all that but that's the main reason for it, was to separate the two. And, and of course, we have customers who are using our engines in Zenit airplanes. And, um, you know, one guy was talking to me, he said, you know, I, I taxi over uh, cow patties in Texas, because <laughs> that's what I use my plane for. And I get like a, a, dunk, 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 like a jolt all the time. So I'm 
thinking, well, maybe we could do like a, a nice soft suspension, and that's what we got here. We got it. So you developed the suspension. you developed the poo poo suspension. It's 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 it works works, works good. <laughs> but it's uh it's the cow pill, cow patty killer. It's what it is. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it it works, and, and it just transforms it from like a dunk, dunk, dunk type of suspension to a very you know, soft ride, and so you definitely feel the difference. And um, for us, you know, doing the slow competitions, we also needed something that when you land with the tail all the way down uh, and you're full braking, inevitably the nose eventually is going to come over like that. And um, the original system probably strong enough, I'm sure, but it doesn't feel good. You just feel like bonk, and uh, now it's more like dunk. So. I think it's an, an overall improvement, at least I like it. Uh, I think we're going to put some pieces together and let people, other customers try it. I'm trying to keep it as inexpensive as possible because I I feel like I feel like it's an improvement. I, I, I also want it to be easy, like you said, this pad is the original pad, so you just bolt it on here, this clamps around here, you put, you put a, you, you just clamp it together. Well, so, thanks for uh, sharing what you're experimenting with at the moment with your uh, with the And Jan Egenfelder just happened to win first place in his class during the National Stool Competition. Thanks for watching this week's episode on the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications so you don't miss a single episode.